Hey there, time for a video. It's been a bit of time. I'm sorry, but uh, business has been rather slow, so I've had to devote more time to my business in order to keep, well, the heat on and, well, it's not really heat, but uh, keep the air conditioning going, maybe. Uh, but yes, just keep keep the ball rolling and video, uh, unfortunately, a little lower down on the list. But I figured, you know what, I better get one out. I'd like to get one out once a week. Yeah. I'm overdue. I don't know how well I'm doing it once a week, but well, whatever. Excuses, 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 excuses. I'm making a video. This is an interesting tube. This tube I found at the Cortland, New York Ham Fest, uh, what, a week or two ago? And uh, Cortland, New York, that's kind of very central New York. It's north of Binghamton. And a uh, very small show, but I enjoyed it greatly. I found some great stuff. It was a great location. Um, yeah, it was it, it just a bit of a long drive. It's a nice drive for me. It's a bunch of back roads, essentially the best way to get for, uh, for me to get there. So I enjoyed it greatly. And I found this. The guy had a bunch of tubes. And uh, I saw this. And it's a very distinctive shape, isn't it? And... Most two guys would instantly recognize this as an 860, a Type 860. It's a very unique shape, isn't it? Well, this is not an 860. This is the earlier version, the 852. What is also interesting that kind of sealed the deal for me, and yeah, I, I paid decent money for this. I think I paid him 40 bucks for this guy. The maker, Sylvania. Let's see if we can get the, the logo there. There, maybe you can see it like that. Yes, this is an early 30s Sylvania transmitting tube. Now, making a video of this is because there's this 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 type of tube here kind of holds a couple of stories. First off, well, it's a it's a an 800 series tube, and the 800 series kind of a a gateway series to tube collecting. And I say that because well, the 800 series of tubes most were rcas but yeah the other players of course had their parts um they were around in the 20s 30s and 40s and of course some designs are lasted way way into the 60s but as, as a tube collector you might go to a ham fest and you're familiar with radio and tv tubes maybe some old globe tubes and then you come across stuff like this and you know your eyes pop out and go oh that's a cool tube and you find out about the 800 series. There's a, they're mostly transmitting types. There's a few receiving types. There's a few specialized types. But they all tend to be kind of weird and unique and neat. So that kind of sucks you in to the whole tube collecting hobby. And you determine you got to get them all. You got to get all the 800 series. And there aren't quite 100 in the 800 series. They don't, there's not a full stretch from 800 to 899 but uh, probably about 70-75% of the numbers are actually used. This is an 852. And, uh, well, it looks like an 860. And certainly when I was the show, a guy had a bunch of tubes. And I uh, went over and looked at it. And, oh, an 860. And then I spun it around and saw, oh, no, this is interesting. It's a Sylvania 860. But then I looked even closer and found out that this is the early version, and it's called an 852. An 860 is a tetrode. This is a triode. Now, the 852 was kind of an important tube for transmitting because it was one of the very early tubes to actually get just into what we call VHF. You could operate this tube up to 30 megahertz. And uh, considering this was introduced in 1927, that was quite a feat. I mean, they don't work well at 30 megahertz, but they do get up there. Your normal transmitting tubes of the era, the, no, they poop out. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll start pooping out at 5, 10 megahertz or so. So, due to the interesting construction to decrease all sorts of capacitances and inductances, inductances and such like that, well, you could get these things up at 30 megahertz. Wow. And yes, flying leads. 
Flying leads are mostly a British thing, but uh, uh, some American tubes actually used them. So yes, these there is not not supposed to be a cap there. This is how it's supposed to be. Although on this particular example, you can see someone has spliced on an extension. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take that off. And yeah, they always fray like that. Um, just the way it is. But this is an important tube in tube history because it opened the door up for a lot of amateurs and the Navy, the military, the U.S. Navy, uh, to start pushing VHF. And of course, it was the Wild West back then. Working, working up uh, above 10 megahertz, wow, that, that was something else. Like I said, this was replaced by the 860 shortly thereafter, only like a year or two after, I think, the 860 came out. But the 852, important. And the other thing that's interesting about this is, of course, the maker. Let's get a look at that logo again. There we go, Sylvania. The tube has seen a little use. You can see that the glass is a little darkened. And, of course, that's the getter there. That's normal. In fact, you can see it a little better there. A little cup for the uh, the better the getter pellet. This one unfortunately doesn't have the type number on it. Usually they uh, it'll say type well 852 in this case. It may have been on the base. The base ceramic base sort of looks like I don't know a little bit of rust stain there. Almost looks like it's been cleaned a little too much. That's the way I had it. But in pictures I've seen uh, of Sylvania 860s and 852s, it'll say. Type 852 down here. But I'm not complaining. This 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 is one of those tubes that's been on my wanted lists for a while. Now, what's interesting about these Sylvania tubes is kind of the history of them. And if you look at this, this has a graphite plate. It's not a metal plate. It's a formed graphite. I'm not sure how they form it, if they do some sort of sintering process or something like that. I don't know. But... The Sylvania Company, of course, Sylvania dates back to the 20s. They were they were in there with a the bunch making 01As and all that. Um, they tried their hand at transmitting tubes in the early 30s. Basically, they uh, got some uh, some engineers from DeForest, and incidentally, this may actually be a DeForest design. I'm not sure. I know that there are DeForest 852s. They call them 552s. Um, I don't know. It might be, it might not. It also might be a GE design. I'm not sure. Uh, a little sketchy on details there. But they, they got a bunch of DeForest engineers, tube engineers, and started making a line of transmitting tubes. And they made, uh, a number of them. Probably, there were probably maybe about 15, 20 types out there. Some are, uh, kind of unique, uh, to Sylvania, and I'll show you one right now. And uh, some are normal types. I'll show you one of the somewhat unique ones. But uh, like here, this is a, 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 not an 852. It's an 825. And they're pretty scarce, actually. And uh, they came in boxes like this. Unfortunately, they're beautiful boxes, but this one is, is just, it's seen better days. And yeah, there's another 852 in there, or 825. So haha, ha, I've got two of them. Um, Really nice looking boxes, but yeah, this one's kind of ratty. But you can see, graphite plates were their thing. Well, guess who didn't like their thing? <laughs> Sarnoff, David Sarnoff. He did not like the idea of Sylvania making transmitting tubes. And of course, RCA still had immense amounts of power and controlled patents and such like that. So they squashed Sylvania. They squashed Sylvania's transmitting tube line. It was gone in, what, two years, something like that. Just just lawsuit away. <laughs> so the Sylvania transmitting tubes tend to be pretty scarce. Um, they I think they were out they, I think they were out of out of out of business by 34, 35 maybe. Of course the receiving line uh, kept on going. In fact, the receiver line for Sylvania, almost as big as RCA's, frankly. And yes, yeah, Sylvania did also get back into the transmitting tube business after all the licenses and patents and all that kind of stuff had gone away. 
yes, Sylvania got back into the transmitting business, and that's why you can still find Sylvania transmitting tubes, but they will be, 99 out of 100 that you will see will be of the new, the new Sylvania. It's the same company, it's just their second attempt at transmitting tubes. So, there we have it. An interesting tube and a nice find from the Cortland, New York Hamfest. It's been on my list. I have a number of these Sylvania uh, transmitting tubes. Um, there are a few more that I need to get, like I'd like to find an 860. An 860 looks identical to this 852. Same flying leads, same shape, same size. It's just there is an extra grid in there, being a tetrode. And then there are some other uh, other weird type uh, uh, 800 series tubes that uh, Sylvania made. And I'm on the lookout for them. And hey, you don't know where they're going to show up. All right. Well, am I going to do anything with this tube? No. <laughs> I'm not going to use up a tube like this. This this A tube like this really is kind of a, a wall hanger. You just look at it and, and enjoy the beauty of the tube, so to speak. I think the filament is actually intact on this one. Um, you know, yeah, it lights up. Uh, it's a big deal. It's not that. It's not that impressive. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna make a transmitter out of this or anything like that. In fact, I don't have anything that uses an 852 anyway. Um, so yes, it's gonna go into the collection uh, amongst the uh, the other Sylvania transmitting tubes. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this look at a Sylvania 852 with its unique shape. And yeah, that thing is boinging around in the breeze there. That's just the way these things are. Um, yeah, it's a neat tube. One of my favorites. This particular one is... I don't want to say I, I never thought I would have come across one. I never would have thought I'd come across one in, in a little stinky hamfest in, in New York. But hey, but... Uh, it's a scarce one, and it's been on my list for a while. All right. I got to get back to work. Business calls. You know what to do. All right. See you later. Bye.